to report, sir, that our small boat met the Baron three leagues off the island. I delivered the letter into the hands of Captain Leclerc. They say the king is prepared for war. So is the emperor. First time in 20 years, he's right. No, he isn't, sir. You wouldn't leave me in command for the first time with a storm like this on my hand, now would you? The old ship load your hand on the wheel. She'll obey you. But he wants to throw the deck cargo overboard. Can't be two captains on one ship, Danglars. I want to talk to Dante's alone. I was expecting the captain of the Pharaoh to bring it to him. But who is he, sir? There's, there's no address. He'll make himself known here. By one word. Elba. Elba. Sounds pretty heavy. How is it up there? We're going up for a hurricane, sir. Magistrate's not so hungry this morning. The guillotine will send him only ten heads for breakfast. And they've done nothing to deserve having their heads chopped off. Nothing except love their exiled emperor who always protected them. Shut your mouth. They'll have your head in the basket, too. Find out what that's about. with our corps. Very soon, gentlemen, every loyal follower of Napoleon will be able to raise his head once more. Will you meet the ship and contact Leclerc? Oh, oh, oh no, the, the king's magistrate might meet the ship, too. I can't afford to have him catch sight of me, can I? <laughs> no, I, I must remain in hiding here until after sunset. Stop right here, Marcel. You may enjoy mingling with these fishwives. I don't. I'll wait for you in Fernand's office. You may run along to this sailor, but without my consent. Yes, Mother. Blew up the main and Mrs. Royal. There is, she goes. Excuse me, please. Please excuse me. Good morning, Mr. Morel. Good morning, Mademoiselle de Rosa. I thought you'd be here. That is the Theron, isn't it? Yes. What can a mother do with a daughter? Nothing. You're an official. 
You've got to stop this sailor business. Can't you refuse to have us out and into a harbor? Send you to another port. Have you sink or something? I'm collector of customs, not ruler of the sea. Well, it's a custom I'm talking about. A bad custom. A lady in love with a sailor. Merely a young girl's infatuation. She sees a hero in Dandy. And what does she see in you? A man who protests loudly that he loves her and does nothing about it. The Saren is flying the captain's pennant at half-mast. That means Leclerc is dead. He was ill before he left. I was afraid he wouldn't last out the voyage. But what about the letter? We arranged before he sailed, if he got worse, to transfer the letter to his first mate. And that's a man named uh, Dante. Well, 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 whatever his name is. Keep a close eye on him and let me know when he gets to a place where it'll be safe for me to meet him. safely home. I wish Captain Leclerc hadn't... He died at sea. A sailor doesn't ask for more. No, sir. You stopped off, Elba? Yes, sir. There was a letter? Why? What do you know about it? What do you know about it? Nothing, sir, except that Captain Leclerc gave it to me to deliver to some man. He said he'd make himself known to me. Let him find you, Edmund. Marseille is full of the king's spies. Well, that hardly concerns me, does it, sir? I'm only carrying out the captain's orders. Would you like to go over the log with me? While you keep the most beautiful lady in Marseille waiting on the dock? On the dock? I'll be here when you come back, Captain Dantes. Captain? Yes, Captain Dantes. From now on, you're in command of the Theron. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you'll keep that enthusiasm for her. Yes, sir. I'd forgotten you. Yes. You really ought to, you know. What if I can't? Well, I think something ought to be done about it. What are you going to do? Well, I... I'm going to kiss you again. But I want you to interrupt them, embracing in front of the whole city. Good morning, Miss Lady. Oh, Fernand. You know Captain Dantes, Monsieur de Mondego? Yes, oh, naturally. One o'clock, Edmund. One o'clock. Good morning, sir. Your mother couldn't possibly understand this fascination for you. Never. But I can. I knew you would. Up to a certain point, but not marriage. Why not? Well, he has no family. I'll give him one. Fernand, I've been warned, scolded, threatened until I'm blue in the face. I don't care about duty, social position, what people say. There are only two things that really matter. A man and a woman. And Dante's is your man? Yes. I shan't say another word. I shouldn't have spoken at all had your mother not insisted. I shall forget everything you said. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Goodbye. I shall never forgive you. Well, Fernand, I hope you've made her see the light clearer than ever. I'm afraid I... Uh -huh. <clears throat> we'll get you some wooden shoes and a bucket of fish, then you'll be in style. Danglars, one of my own men, gave me the information. Dantes has the letter with him now. Follow this, Edmund Dantes. Watch him. But don't arrest him till he delivers the letter to his confederate, whoever he is. Then seize them both and bring them here. Here's your warrant. Yes, Mr. Matterford. Well, Mondego, in exposing this spy, you've done a great service to your king. And to you, de Villefort. And to Mademoiselle de Rosa. Merely what any friend would do to save her from what we might call an appalling marriage? What brings you here? I seek a golden treasure, valuable above price. Not so easy to obtain, Monsieur Cairo. First, you must make formal demand, because the custom of my country is the same as that of others. Is it a proposal you want? Yes, and a formal one. Oh. Well... I, Edmund Dantes, yes. ask that... <laughs> I'm wrecked. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> the pirates sunk. I can't make the land. Stuck on the reef of formality. <laughs> <laughs> but if you'll come aloft with me. Aloft? Yes, up in the rigging. I can't think down here. Suppose I refuse you up there. Girl overboard. <laughs> Look 
you can see the sea from here. And clouds, like silver ships. The ships that Edmund Anders will have someday. Sailing into harbor. With what for cargo? Oh, a lot of dreams. And his proposal to Mercedes. And her answer. Is at the cafe reserve. Monsieur Mullet is giving a dinner in his honor. Well, we uh, we can't wait any longer. You stay here. I'll go there at once. <laughs> to be happy. They really are. Uh, come now, before the dance starts. Glasses, everybody. We dance with up the glasses. Come now, my friends. Four glasses, more wine. I'm looking for the captain of the Pharaoh. Is he here? Yes, sir. I have an important message for him. Don't think I can disturb him. I'm afraid you must. Here, everybody. To the betrothal of Edmund Daddies, captain of the Pharaoh. And Mademoiselle Mercedes de Rosa, may calm seas and a fair breeze bring their ships safely to the port of happiness, prosperity, and a long life. Drink to liberty and equality. A gentleman with an urgent message for you. For me? Captain of the Pharaon. Oh, yes, I'll go with you now. I'll be back in a moment. Well, you've done it. Now, will you dance with me, the rejected suitor who hasn't changed his feelings about you one bit? Here's the captain, sir. Good evening. You are the captain of the Pharaon? Yes, sir. Elba. I've been expecting you. No, no, not here. Follow me. Thank you. That's all. Good night. Monsieur, you're under arrest by order of the King's Magistrate. Monsieur de Villefort? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, very well. Take him to the court chamber. Follow me. Yes, I'm glad that's done. Captain Dundas, the King's Magistrate orders your arrest. On what charge? Suspicion of bearing treasonable information. Something's happened. But uh, something's wrong. Nothing really. I have to go to the court, that's all. To answer questioning about someone else. I'll come along with you if you like, Captain. Perhaps I could be of some service. Please do. I'm going too. To the jail. You will not. Oh, but Mother, I am. Please stay here, everybody, and dance. It's nothing serious. We'll be back soon. Nice disgraceful start for the total, isn't it? Meddling again, eh? I thought you were in Paris. Instead, you find me in Marseille, and you're a prisoner. <laughs> Amusing, isn't it? The humor completely escapes me. It would. Excuse me, I'm old-fashioned. I don't think a father should stand before his son. If the king knew that one of the conspirators against him was my father... Yeah. My son would lose his office. <laughs> For that reason, you must protect him. I will protect you. And myself, too. I'll have you sent away under guard on a ship tonight. If you're planning to deport all the French citizens whose sympathies are with Napoleon, <laughs> there won't be anybody left in France. How many messages has this Dante's brought to you? None. The care was my man. He's dead. Dante's knows nothing of it. I don't believe it. Yeah. Uh, I hope you appreciate that I'm saving your life. I see. Perhaps I can do a favor for you sometime. I shouldn't hesitate to ask it in return for this. Turn this prisoner over to Crano. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good night, my, uh, my most noble majesty. Yeah, none of that. Come on along. Come on along.
thanks for breaking up an intolerable party so soon. Bring in Edmund Dantes alone. Captain Dantes. Edmund Dantes, Captain of the Ferran. Yes, sir. As you're a friend of Monsieur Mondego's, I'll do what I can for you. Thank you, sir. Now, do you call yourself a loyal subject of His Majesty the King? Yes, sir. And yet you're found carrying a message, plotting treason against your ruler. Oh, but, sir, I was only carrying out my captain's orders. I knew nothing about what was in the letter. Who is the man you delivered the letter to? I don't know his name. Ever see him before? Never. Could you give an accurate description of him? I'm sure I could. He's about your height. That's and... enough. Can identify him another time. Why did you stop at Elba? Captain's orders. Where's the captain? Dead. Dead? Who's to vouch for your innocence? Almost any member of the crew would tell would you. Monsieur Danglars, no. Certainly. Bring Monsieur Danglars in. Yes, sir. This place is me in a very difficult position. I never dreamed. Oh, that... I'm not holding you responsible, Inspector Mondego. Ah. Who gave the order to stop at Elba? The first mate, Monsieur Dantis, sir. Describe what happened. We lay off the island a whole day, sir. An officer came alongside in a small boat and gave Monsieur Dantes a letter, sir. No, you're mistaken, Dangerous. He went to the captain's cabin. I stayed on deck. I saw what happened. One of you is obviously lying. I have nothing to hide, sir. Neither have I. Monsieur Danglars has been in my office many times. I know him to be a most sincere and honest man. Oh, I see. Danglars told you about Elba and the letter because he wanted to be captain. And you told the magistrate here because... Because of Mercedes. You appear here as my friends. But Simarelli is outside. He'll tell you that. That's enough. Take this prisoner to the Chateau d'If. Yes, sir. Why to the Chateau d'If? Why not right here till my trial? Your trial? Oh, yes. Well, it's only a matter of an hour to bring you back across the harbor. Can I see my fiancée, Mademoiselle de Rosas? No. Will you give me a few minutes with Monsieur Morel? No, he's under suspicion, too. want me any more, sir? No. Uh, for the trial? He's had his trial. Who's there? Prisoner, sir, from the mainland. Criminal or political? Political, sir. Well, put him in any place. I'll see him in the morning. This note is important, sir. I'd like to write a message. Certainly, certainly. Now, let me see. 34 occupied, 35 occupied. Twenty-seven empty. Twenty-seven, a splendid apartment. Thank you very much. Would you kindly see this delivered to Monsieur Morel in Marseille early tomorrow? Certainly, certainly. He'll have my attorney here in the morning. Certainly. Twenty-seven, I said. Good night. Speak to me. Anything. Just a word. God bless you. Don't talk to the prisoners. This ain't the right cell. Can't you read? This ain't 27, it's 37.
Mr. Vealfall, His Majesty's Royal Agent at Marseille. Good evening. State your urgent business. Sire, I was fortunate in arresting a spy who possessed this letter which states that Napoleon would leave Elba for France on February the 26th. And this is the 1st of March. <laughs> He'd have landed by now. I commend your zeal to be for, but I have thousands of secret agents in the South, one of whom certainly would have warned us by now. Uh, your Majesty. What a fuss. Speak, Marcus. Napoleon has landed in France. Impossible. A message just came by signal telegraph. He was received, sir, with open arms. The usurper in France. And no inkling before this from our valiant agents. Blind fools, blind fools, all of them. All but one, my friend de Villefort. Summon the minister of war. De Villefort, even in this moment of crisis, the king does not forget. Here, take this as a token of my gratitude. Where's the minister of war? Well, then, we have three prisoners in our dungeons here, the reason for whose imprisonment has long since been forgotten, so that even their names don't appear in our records. Edmund Dantes is henceforth listed as dead. As number 27, he will merit no concern. Go here. So Dantes is dead, eh? Or am I asking too many questions? He died just in time. Morel is in Paris for an audience with Bonaparte, and Bonaparte acts quickly. Well, it didn't take him long to put me out of office. <laughs> this is my last and most important official act. Political prisoners will be released at once. And Dantes, with Morel's backing, could easily find me a home at the Chateau d'If. Come in. Oh, Fernand. A letter from Monsieur Morel by special post. He's arranged his audience with the Emperor and promises that Edmond will be free in a week. I'm afraid it's already too late. Too late? He's not. In trying to escape, he was shot, killed. He wouldn't do that. I wrote him every day that we would save him. Good morning. Is it a nice day or is it stormy? Did you ask the governor if I could please see him? It's about my attorney, my trial. Nice conversation I have with you both every day. Why don't you say something? Speak to me, swear to me, anything. Hey, hey let go, let just go. Just let us see if you could speak. You tell the governor won't eat any more of his wormy food till I see him. You hear? After this, we feed him through the door. because the governor gets two sous a day for every live prisoner. Come on. He ain't dead.
Mercedes in your care because you have always loved her. And always will. No, no. No, no. I'm not going to die yet, Mercedes. Not until you promise you will marry Fernand. Accept this woman who stands before you as your wife. I do. Mercedes Yvonne Melanie de Rosa, do you accept this man who stands before you as your husband? I do. Thank God you're a prisoner, too. I thought you might be a jailer deceiving me, encouraging me to betray myself. Can you understand what I'm saying? Can you speak? No. I'm too, too... To feel the warmth of a comrade's hand. I had no means of knowing there was a dungeon lower down than mine. I burrowed 30 feet through solid rock for six years hoping to reach the outside wall and make my escape. And now I find I'm only in another cell. Six years. I'm sorry. I am the Abbey Faria. I was Edmund Dantes. How long have you been here? I don't know. Since the 28th of February, 1815, how long is that? Eight years. This is the 7th of June, 1823. Only eight years. I'm still young. That's funny. I'm 68. I've been in prison since 20. I'll help you up. What? Let's talk. No, no. It's not yet big enough for my shoulders. Oh, I'll dig it away. I'll work all night. The guards must think the figure in the bed is you. Asleep? Yes.
can you see? Perfectly. <laughs> Owl's eye. Nature's compensation for those obliged to live always in the dark. Here. Now we can stand. See this stone, beveled and grooved, applying the same engineering principles used in the building of the pyramids. Good likeness, isn't it? I'll get a candle. I want you to see my work. Candle? Made from beef fats. And a match. Matches? Made from the breakings of a twig broom. And some sulfur they gave me when I complained of a skin affliction. You see these? Thread, made from blanket wrapping. Needles and pens from fish bones, ink from pot black and vinegar, knife, file, chisel from an old kettle that I managed to hide. And Edmund, could it seem like bragging if I, honored by degrees from five universities, managed to outwit the six year old mind of my jailers? They call me a mad old priest and harmless, and I encourage them in this belief, and in return, they grant me certain favors, such as chunks of chalk rock and slate, with which I've inscribed on these walls the creeds and formulas on which are based the sum total of man's knowledge. This is my chronometer, from which I calculate the time. My calendar. My faith. All quotations, as you see, in the languages in which they were originally written. Greek, Hebrew, Latin, Sanskrit over there, French, Italian, English, and German, and Arabic. I don't expect you to understand much of it now, but with patience and willingness, you can master it. And they call you mad. They call me mad because I speak the truth. Because I've repeatedly offered them as high as six million francs to release me. Six million francs? Oh, I see. You think I'm crazy too? Well, I don't blame you. But everyone has heard of the Desparta family fortune. I have. Since boyhood, a bedded treasure, wasn't it? Dating from ancient Rome. Well, for 20 years, I was librarian and tutor to the Duke de Sparta. He had no children and made me his sole heir. I planned to use it to ease suffering humanity. But this so enraged the old Duke's enemies who planned after his death to seize the fortune for themselves, that they submitted me first to torture and then threw me into prison in an effort to force from me the secret hiding place which I alone know. Together, we will dig our way to freedom, and one half the treasure shall be yours. I'll dig my fingers to the bone. I'll tear these rocks apart. Money, riches, power with which to strangle and curse three rotten rats. Stop, just stop. Oh, what a miserable creature you are. Your eyes green with greed, your heart filled with revenge. In such a condition, you're not fit to have one sue. Patience. What a long road you have to travel. Be thankful your digging tools are but bits of crockery and iron. It will take time. Pray for it to be a long time, so that when you emerge into the light, it will not be as a revengeful horseman of the apocalypse, but as an avenging angel doing the work of God. I'll obey you in everything. Everything. We must watch out for the jailer. Quick, back to your own cell. Pray. Most heavenly Father, at thy will, the most barren earth blossoms into beautiful bloom. Amen. <laughs> and then Madame Rondeau fell at the last hurdle and burst his breeches. <laughs> you really must see it. And the horses are too, too. Well, you know what horses are. Get Fernand to take you. Since he's been treasurer to the king, he has no time for frivolities. So? Well, goodbye, Mercedes. Goodbye. Oh! I 
I've just heard that the king's treasurer is so occupied with official business that he has no time for frivolities. My official business this evening takes me to 58 Avenue, Montaigne. I shall be home. You see, Mother? This is how the show goes up and down. I see. Mercedes! Yes, Salon? Oh, forgive my great familiarity. Countess. Countess? Yes, Countess. Today, the king is restored to my family its rightful title. My son, you are now a Viscount. But I don't want to be a Viscount. I want to be a sailor. You'll be a Viscount on your father's side. Good evening, Danglars. Everything is arranged. The banking house of Danglars and Company opens its doors for Paris for the first time tomorrow morning. Congratulations. I'll finish myself, Papa. And in return, for the many valuable clients you have sent me, here are your shares in the company, as I promised. I shall deliver Mondegos as soon as I leave you. Thank you. Oh, uh, I read this morning that the king had rewarded you again. Oh, yes. I think I can promise you His Majesty's personal account very soon. That will mean certain success. <laughs> and you shall have a larger share for that. I expect it. Yes, I said expect it, and, and you shall have it. Uh, there is only one fly in the ointment. Mm. Who is it? Uh, Deputy Mundine. Oh, he's always shouting about the people's rights. He threatens proposing a new law which will seriously curtail our profits. He will be silenced tomorrow morning. That's why my hat. Time, 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 time. do you really think we'll have to dig? Nearly five years, according to my estimate. Only five years? Well, well, just like the day after tomorrow for us. Edmund, come quickly. I've just examined the tunnel. Your lunar observations were correct. This morning at 10.17 was the highest tide in six months. And water seeped through a crevice and loosened some rocks. It's Wonderful. I'll come along now. You were right, Father. Almost a pool of water here. Salt water. Taste it. Only three feet more to go. Listen, can you hear the sea pounding against the rocks? Doing some of our work for us. See? Rocks falling all the time. Be careful. Come back, quickly! No, father! Father! See your head! Don't lay me down. Sit me up. My ribs are crushed. I don't want the blood to get to my head yet. Cross my legs. <coughs> Put my hands on my elbows. Belt and take the spot of parchment. By will, written on a piece of cloth, it names you my sole heir. When people die, we feel a grief because their minds are lost to us. How fortunate am I I leave my mind behind in your possession. 
It is part of yours. Use it as an instrument for justice. My blessing. Edmund, if you can only see. Death is so beautiful. The old Abbey. Well, something's happened to him. He looks dead. He is dead. We'll get the undertakers. That's the only way they ever get out of this place. Hurry up, Jules. You get the chain and shot. 36 pounder. I ain't going to carry it way back here by myself. Got to get the stretcher, too. Oh, that's good enough. Go on back and shut that door. Think he's going to get up and walk away? Go on, throw it on. We're on his feet. Tied good. I'll take the head. No, it's your time to take the feet. All right.
some others should pick them up. We don't want any strangers aboard. I always say, land your fish first. Then if you don't like it, throw it back. <laughs> what do you say? Shall we pick them up? Aye. Aye. All right. Bring her around. We'll pick them up to larboard. Hand them up, Mr. Cobo. Sit down. Steve, all together. Turn them down. Where'd you come from, nephew? Well, I... I... No lies. I know. Your skin's as wet as a fish's belly. Prison or the galleys? Get him some food. I suppose you'd like to get rid of this seaweed. This coat of mine will be all right for now. Ali here cannot talk, but he wants to give you the sandals. You look like a ghost. I am. The son will take care of that. Jacopo says you've been a sailor. Yes. I'm Captain Vampa. We smuggle for a living. The crew all shares and shares alike. We could use a good sailor. Uh, what's your name, or uh, what shall we call you? Sinbad. Sinbad? Sinbad the sailor. <laughs> <laughs> What you looking at on Monte Cristo? There's nothing there but wild goats. Nothing but goats, that's what I'm looking at. Captain Bonnie was due here this morning with a cargo of tobacco to trade for our laces. If he's not here by nightfall, Maybe I'll... Maybe he's round the lee of the island. Well, I'll up anchor and see. If you like, while you're gone, I'll go ashore and kill our dinner. You can pick me up when we get back. Well, it better be young and tender or we leave you there. Up anchor, all hands. Jacopo, I'm going ashore on the small boat. <laughs>
Cadiz. On these moonlight nights, I can hear the good people of Marseille saying, isn't it beautiful? Here are the names of the three. Burn them into your memory. Never forget them. I want to know everything about them. Everything. About their wives, sweethearts, mistresses. About their children, family life, state connections. Dates, facts, histories, details down to the finest points. I wish to know them as intimately as I know myself. And as I know my weaknesses, I shall discover theirs. And then, I'll strike. They all live in Paris, where I'm sending you now. I'll give you money enough for the first month. Spend freely. Live like a king, if you will. But get me what I want. In 60 days, draw on the Count de Monte Cristo through the banking firm of Thompson and French in Rome. For in 60 days, I will have established my right to that title and the banking firm I will own. Ali, we are going to Albania to trace carefully the steps of one Mondego there. And if I'm not mistaken, we'll dig up a trail as foul as stinking fish. We'll all meet next in Rome, where plotting is a custom more ancient than the catacombs. Sorry, thank you. You make one doubt, my dear Count, that I was ever champion of the King's Guard. You take your fencing very seriously. If I seem vicious in my attack, it's because I always imagine you're not my friend, but my enemy. Tomorrow, at eight. As usual. Excellency. Welcome, Jacopo. It's good to see you. Well, tell me all about Paris. Is it as gay as they say, with wine, women, and song? Oh, very gay. <laughs> I made several mistakes. I had too much money to spend. Well, it didn't prevent your collecting a mass of remarkable information. Look, I've had every word copied in my famous biographies. The Villefort's history alone occupies more than 7,000 entries. When I discovered what really could be found out about a person, it made a very good little boy out of me and taught me exactly how to deal with three very bad little boys who are leaders of a great nation. I must attack them with the same weapons they've so viciously used against their countless enemies. Mondego with flattery, Danglers with money, the Villefort with law. Well, now the late news. Albert, the young Vicount de Mondego, is here in Rome. Good. And when he left, I found myself in the same stagecoach with him. Much to your surprise. Of course. Well, he's a fine young man from your reports. Courageous, strong. A junior officer in the Navy. A sailor. We'll give him one full day of pleasure. Then tomorrow night, perhaps. The catacombs. The catacombs. Well, Jacopo, we'll soon be leaving Rome. I'm ready at last to open the gates of Paris. With Albert de Mondego for my key. You tell your friend that if the 25,000 gold was not paid by midnight, that your body would take its place among these other beauties? I never thought I was worth that much. I don't see why he should. That would be bad. Deliver this to Signor Jacopo Capitolani. If you could wait until I reach my father by post, I... We can't wait. Which one of these beauties do you think I'll be like? One's as good as another. Make your own choice. Excellency. Good evening, Vampa. The boy? Asleep. You don't frighten easily. Yes, I didn't have any money on hand, so I rushed to the Count de Monte Cristo. He kindly offered to come here with me. The oh. Count de Monte Cristo. This is the Vicount de Mondego. What does this mean? Excellency, I had no way of knowing he was your friend. What can I do? How can I pay for my mistake? In the future, it would be wiser to be more careful. Yes, Excellency. Jacopo told me you're a great man, but I never realized you had influence over everything. Only enough to protect my friend. 
I hope you don't think this happens to every visitor to Rome. Perhaps we can make you forget it by filling the rest of your holiday with nothing but pleasure. Uh, the gentleman's hat. I'm dying to meet this Monte Cristo, who's so remarkable, marvelous, costly, and all the other adjectives you've called him. You will see. He's... He's... I know, I know. He's never been to Paris before. You've told me that, too, many times. He said he'd be here at 10 o'clock precisely. It's almost that now. I know everything about him, except why he wanted a copy of my portrait. I told you that, too. When he was visiting me at my hotel and saw the miniature of you I always carry with me, he simply asked if he could have it copied for his gallery. Yes, but... But, but... why not? Aren't you the most beautiful woman in Paris? In all France, for that matter. In all the world. <laughs> Monsieur de Villefort. Good morning, Fanon. Oh, good morning, de Villefort. I stopped by to show you Danglars' suggestions for the week. Oh, buying heavily of Spanish bonds, eh? I suppose, as usual, it would be wise to follow suit. Yes. We'll drop our buying orders at his bank on the way. Will you come in my carriage? Or are there too many ladies waiting at their windows to wave to you as you go by? Never too many, de Villefort. <laughs> I can't go for a little. I promised Albert that I would meet this mysterious Count de Monte Cristo. Oh, he saved Albert's life, didn't he? Yeah, something of the sort, yes. Oh, there they are now. Suppose I wait for you in there. Now, would you mind? And then please interrupt me after a moment. I will. Yes? Father, the Count de Monte Cristo. Charmed. My son has told me of your many kindnesses. Uh, you saved him from the hands of bandits, with which I believe your country is infested. I dare say there are bandits in other countries, known by other names. Perhaps. My pardon, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we've little time, Fernand. Good morning, Albert. Count de Monte Cristo, may I present the king's attorney, Monsieur de Villefort? Honored. It is a pleasure, sir. I have followed your brilliant career with a great deal of interest. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Excellencies, the great country of France awaits your services. Please don't let me detain you. If you will be so kind. We shall meet soon again, my dear Count. I shall plan for it, Count de Mondego. Albert, is your mother well? Uh, yes, Father. Tell her that I shall do my best to see her sometime today. Oh, if in a moment I excuse myself... You'll understand it's only to send a message to my lady love, naming our rendezvous for this afternoon. I understand. The Countess is waiting. My dear Count, how can I ever thank you for... for what you've done for my son? It was humiliating to think that one of my country's guests should suffer such an indignity. Won't you sit down? I'd have known you anywhere. From your portrait. Oh, yes. Albert told me you had it copied. Why? A painter rarely catches beauty when he does a combination I can't resist. I hope you weren't displeased. On the contrary. Ah, getting along famously, aren't you? Yes. I must pay myself away. I have a house I've never seen awaiting my inspection. You call again. If I don't provoke your hospitality. You know my address, you won't neglect me. Tomorrow? In the afternoon, I should be home. Mother! Who is he? The Count of Monte Cristo. No, I'm...
tell me everything you know about him. My mother? Is he so strange? I don't know. There's just something about him that frightens me. Oh, silly. Perhaps I am. R. E. N. C. H. Nothing would give me greater pleasure, my dear Count, than to take care of your banking in Paris. But there must be some mistake in this letter of advice. Are Thompson and French in the habit of making mistakes? Oh, never before. My most reliable correspondence. But this I... Is there stationery, properly watermarked? You've compared the handwriting and tested the signature? Yes, yes, invisible stamp, everything authentic. But one word only I question. Unlimited. It says I am to grant you unlimited credit. The House of Baron Danglars was highly recommended as... Quite adequate to fulfill my quick demands, but if, of course... Of course, of course. I might modestly claim that there's no stronger house than mine in Paris. But please give me some idea of uh, what amount one of your quick demands might entail. Well, I doubt whether I shall require more than six millions from you this year to cover my living expenses. Six million? More than it takes to run the royal palace. Really, Baron? Yes, about six millions, I should say. You see... I always carry a million with me. Well, I... I shall arrange for it. <laughs> It'll take me several days. <laughs> you won't need any today. Yes, please buy for me this morning 50,000 shares of British Maritime. British Maritime? 50,000 shares? <laughs> Is it going to raise? Oh, I invest only in certainties. Every European banking house of major importance sends me a daily telegraph, a service I personally finance. And uh, British Maritime. We'll go up at least uh, 12 points within the next two days. If you speculate, you might do well. But perhaps you hesitate to take my advice. Certainly not, my dear Count. <laughs> Even a banker likes to add to his store of uh, pennies. <laughs> I'll take um, uh, uh, 10,000 shares myself to prove my confidence. As you wish. The market's open. Good morning, Baron. Uh, good morning, Excellency. <laughs> My office, my reserves, my, my... Well, everything I have is at your service. The respected Baron Danglis, eh? Cheat. Oh. Hypocrite. Skunk. Skunk. And up it went. Twelve points in two days. Exactly as he said. I sold. And profited 120,000 francs. Oh. I never let us profit. Oh, suppose I'd have risked your money and lost. How you'd have cried. <laughs> you always do. Well, next time, if his buying orders go through you... Yes, yes, yes. When he buys, we buy. When he sells, we sell. Perfectly simple and perfectly honest. Besides, he's invited me to participate gives me tips. I think he likes me. Mondego's vanity will blind him to my motives. Danglers will stuff with profits till we're ready to pluck the goose. But the Villefort is shrewd. If he should get suspicious and put his pack of secret service agents on my trail... Come in. Monsieur Fouquet to see your excellency. Monsieur Fouquet. You know who he is? Who doesn't? The greatest detective in Europe. Show Monsieur Fouquet in. But, uh, We'll find out if he lives up to his reputation. Your Excellency. Oh, this is Monsieur Jacopo, my personal confidant. You're at liberty to speak. I've just returned from Marseille with a complete record of Edmond Dante from his birth to his death. He is dead, then? Yes. I found that he'd lived for 16 years after he was entered as dead in the record. But finally he was drowned while cleverly trying to effect his escape. There can be no doubt, then, he drowned. It would be a miracle if he got out of that sack. But, uh... But? I'm surprised to hear you use but, Monsieur Fouquet. I am informed that he lived and was picked up by Italian smugglers, becoming a member of their crew. Well, it's possible, but... 
Excuse me. I just said that it might be possible. But if it is, I'll find him. He gave me a scare. I didn't know he was working for you. I couldn't afford to have him working for anyone else, now could I? I must find out what they could find out about me. I'm saving the veal for the trouble. The time will come when I'll want him to know who I am. I'll hand him the information on the silver platter. This investigation business has gotten to be an awful habit with you. You even investigate yourself. You want everyone to know who you are? One day I'll want to publish it to the whole world. So tomorrow I'm going to buy a newspaper. Using my house as a rendezvous, eh? What will your father say to that? If you knew how desperately we try to meet each other, unobserved. Shall I? Please. I have an idea. Is it a plan to reconcile our fathers to our marriage? You're the only one who can do it. They're bursting with admiration for you. Really? Well, this is a different plan. To repay the kindness shown to me in Paris, I'm giving a ball. My guest of honor is to be the father of my first Parisian friend, Count de Mondego. Oh, how father will be puffed up about that. I thought it particularly apropos to combine with it an Albanian pageant and series of tableau representing the court of Ali Pasha, at which your father gained such extraordinary fame and honors. Isn't it exciting, Albert? Of course, I shall want your mother's permission. Can you get it for me, do you think? No, sir, I'm, I'm afraid you'll have to get that yourself. She wondered why you never called after that first day. Well, I shall be privileged. Tomorrow afternoon? Well, now business is over, let's talk about your future. If you can only get Father to so listen much. to reason. Don't you think you'd... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there must be something like this somewhere. I've had it ever since. For many years. Well, it speaks the truth if Mendantes is dead. Then who is this Count de Monte Cristo who so closely resembles him? The resemblance has been noted by no one but you. He is, in fact, to answer your question, a person so utterly unlike a man named Dantes that they might have been born of different parents. Even the soul is not the same. I can believe that. The present is the only time that holds the truth. The past is lies. With this for witness. It was once truth that Edmund and Mercedes loved each other. Today that truth is false. And how fortunate it is. For now we find her not a simple sailor's wife, but a countess, consort of a noble, while Dante's one life finished lives another. The past for you dies very easily. Easily? What's dead is dead. In that respect, I'm a fatalist. Then tell me, Monsieur Fatalistic Count, what does your heart crave now? Intelligence, first of all. Then, perhaps, simply to live gracefully. Hence the graceful gesture of honoring my husband with a regal entertainment. Yes. And why my husband out of all the others? Because I have a real affection for his son, whom I met by chance in Rome. And further, because I hold his charming wife in great esteem and admiration. Forgive me for ever mistrusting your motives. Henceforth, the Count de Monte Cristo and the Countess de Mondego will meet and greet each other with nothing but the airy, meaningless compliments that befit their social position. And Edmund Dantes? Is dead. I have forgotten him. Good. I shall look forward to receiving the most gracious Countess as my guest. 
I appreciate the significant honor you are bestowing upon both the Count and your obedient servant. I told you from time to time I'd give you certain truths to print. Watch closely what goes on, then seek me out. The first tableau portrays His Excellency, Count de Mondego, presenting his credentials as French ambassador to Ali Pasha. see Ali Pasha in his harem. Look, Emily, there's Hortense de Bray and Rady Latour. Both have been mistresses of Mondego. This isn't Ally Pasha's harem, it's Mondeo! <laughs> <laughs>
Commander Mondego, honored guests, please forgive this unfortunate occurrence. This fanatic woman entered here under veiled disguise. I have ordered her arrest. Every great man is attacked by crazed imposters. I hope Counter Mondego will accept the deep apologies of my house. His valiant record is a matter of history. We are here to do him honor. Who was that crazy woman? I'll have her brought to you for questioning. Oh, no, no, don't, don't. Please don't. It's perhaps best to forget the whole affair. That's very kind of you. Shall we not dance? <laughs> Perfectly ridiculous. What a shock for you, my dear. How charmingly Monte Cristo handled it. Excellency, Bouchon, I was looking for you. A man is waiting at your office with a locked dispatch box, for which this is the key. The box contains signed evidence and testimony that this is the real Princess Hyde, and that what she said is true. Devote your entire paper to it. Prepare for a jump in circulation, and deliver the first copy off the press by special messenger into the hands of Count de Mondego. I regret the aid of the Count's advice. He has to just retire, Your Excellency. I shouldn't dare disturb him now. However, he always rises at six. I wait. Early Mondego. Where are you? Don't shoot. You've only one bullet and would surely miss. Where are you? If you could see as I can in the dark, you would observe my pistol aimed carefully at your head. Two steps to your right, you'll find a table. Now first put down your pistol. It has a quick trigger and your hand is shaking. Thank you. If you're right on the edge of the table, you'll find some matches. When I say ready, strike a light. Ready. I'm glad you brought the pistol. I didn't have one. Will you light the candle there? Another one. I like to see the faces of my guests. Forgive my precautions for saving my life. You intended to take it, didn't you? I wouldn't have killed you without first forcing from you a full explanation. After which, I would have given you your choice of weapons. As you did Ali Pasha. You're avenging Ali Pasha, then? No. Myself. I don't recall that our paths ever crossed before three months ago. As Monte Cristo, no. Who are you, then? Obviously, some imposter posing as a count. Who else are you? Before I tell you, Mondego, what is your choice of weapons? Pistols, if you will, but I prefer not to awaken Paris at such an early hour. Swords, daggers, fists? Swords would suit me perfectly. Swords, then. I have them here. A trick I learned to fool the jailers while tunneling myself out of the Chateau d'If. Yes, the Chateau d'If. Does that clue mean nothing to you? 
Dust off your memory. Go back 20 years. Back to the days when you first discovered that a life meant nothing if it furthered your ambitions. Think. Think. An innocent, unsophisticated sailor whose name was... Dantes. Right. Edmund Dantes. Simple, isn't it? Very simple indeed. I might have questioned my skill against the formidable Monte Cristo, but against Edmund Dantes, swords. You have very cleverly planned my destruction, Dantes, but you won't have the pleasure of living to see it. Good. I'm accustomed to fighting as the underdog. sword, Mondega, but your past that disarmed you. Jacobo, take Count Mondega to his home in my carriage. Take him secretly to his garden entrance, as by this time his front door is surely besieged by reporters from every newspaper and perhaps the police. He is to communicate with no one. Good morning. Baron Danglis personally visited my office this morning and gave me this. It's a thousand francs, sir. In return for which, I was to send him copies of all telegraph messages addressed to you. Keep it for your children's education. Thank you, sir. Send the Baron the copies as he requested. I'll see that he gets the proper information. Yes, sir. Monte Cristo, future political situation makes Anglo-Spanish shares wonderful investment. Suggest unlimited buying, Thompson and French. <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. Start buying at once. Investing the deal for and other special clients' money as well? No. Only mine. Oh, but the risk. Risk? This is one of Monte Cristo's certainties. Haven't we made money on every one of them? Convert all my holdings into Anglo-Spanish. All? I've investigated carefully. Neither Rata nor the Renti is buying Anglo-Spanish. They don't know everything. I'm tired of playing second fiddle to Rothschild, Varenti, Monte Cristo. After this one we meet, I want them to take their hats off first. Bye. Bye. Show Baron Dangler's in. It's collapsed. I'm ruined. We're both ruined. Why? I knew it would collapse. You knew, but you've been buying. No. But Thompson French, but their advice was... I received that advice, but their message was in code. Though it said to buy, it really meant to sell. You see, Thompson and French is owned by a man named Edmund Dantes. Who? Monte Cristo. 
You said Edmund Dandies, Monte Cristo. They are the same danglers. Is he alive? Yes, but. Call the doctor. Lost his mind. Permanently? Irretrievably. Marseille. Morel. Dantes. Chateau d'If. A mental suicide, Doctor. Mental suicide? Yes. He destroyed his mind with an overdose of two deadly poisons. Poisons? Avarice and greed. <laughs> Welcome, Albert. It's been a long time. I've just returned from Marseille. We buried my father there. Oh, yes, I know. I... There are certain circumstances leading to my father's death I don't quite understand. That's why I've come to you, who knows everything. Surely, if, if I can... My friends report that this Princess Heidi has been seen with you in your carriage several times. That's true. She is here now, living in your house. At present, yes, but... Do you deny that you had previous knowledge of her intent to expose my father? Do you deny that he visited you the morning of his death? Was returned home in your carriage, under guard, and... and a few minutes later shot himself. He came to me for help I couldn't give. Your open association with Princess Heidi is an intolerable affront to the family of Mondego. And one that can only be appealed Stop. by... Don't say it. Don't say it, Albert. Don't challenge me. Rather, anyone but you. I have other friends who respect me. I must prove to them that running away is not the habit of all Mondegos. If killing me will save your honor. I don't wish to kill you. But... Well, then, we might... I see what you're thinking. You're suggesting a bloodless duel. Then all my life I... I live a lie, knowing that I placed Cardus ahead of honor. Even my father wouldn't stoop to that. I await your pleasure. Tomorrow at dawn. The place and details my seconds will arrange. They'll present themselves this afternoon. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Something's happened? Yes. Something admirable and terrible. Something I never planned. Your meeting with Albert is at seven. It is already five. You only have an hour left for rest. Will you use his dueling pistols or yours? His, I suspect. What difference does it make? Monsieur Fouquet is waiting. So, here is the link that Fouquet's chain lacks. Tell him to go at once and drag De Villefort from his bed. The great king's attorney won't be sleepy long when he has in his hands the evidence that will send me back to prison. If I survive the duel, I shall go through with the trial. If I die, the bill for it will go free. Yes. This chest contains my past, my plans, and my unfinished business. Also my will, which makes provisions for my friends, servants, and you. My trusted confidant. Yep. My house is now in order. I'll see you at once. Edmund, don't 
didn't kill my boy. He told you? Not a word. Bernard, one of his seconds thought I ought to know. I see. I wonder if you did. No. I'm the only one who sees. Sees you as you were. And sees you as you are now, devoid of every human feeling, bent upon destroying everything that lies in your path of vengeance. Please believe I've put my task above the mean level of personal vengeance. I am exposing criminals, not for their sins against myself, but for their black injustices to others. Not only for what they have done, but for what they continue to do. They are the ones devoid of all humanity, the ones that profited by the sufferings of others. Whom will it profit if you kill my son? Surely you don't think this dual part of my design. What else am I to think, knowing how skillfully you have destroyed the others? Let me tell you about Albert. He worships you. Never in his life has he felt such a strong affection for anyone but me. He never understood his father. There was no bond of sympathy between them. Why? Because that was a part of my design. I reared him in the image of the man I loved. He is the son Edmond Dante would have had. I had hoped that he be claimed by Monte Cristo. I claimed him long ago, Mercedes. But the situation now is desperate. His honor is at stake. We must protect it. He has a growing fear that he'll be like... I know, his father. That he'll be thought a coward. Promise me you'll let the duel go through. For the sake of his future. He must have self-respect. You promise me he'll have a future, then? You really think I'd guide my bullet to its mark? Not now, I don't. But you see, I had to be quite sure. Not for myself alone. There's Valentine de Villefort. I can't forget that when I was her age, I lost the man I loved. We can't cast a shadow across the path of Valentine. I'm afraid it's already too late. Jacopo, has Fouquet left? Yes, Excellency, I saw him on his way. He'll be at his door by now. The King's attorney's door. De Villefort is the next one on my list. If you would spare the feelings of De Villefort's daughter, Tell Albert to take careful aim and shoot to kill. Gentlemen, you have your instructions. Six paces, turn at my command. Fire at will. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, turn. Your Excellency, Count de Monte Cristo, Count de Mondego. Your aim was true. Why didn't you hold it? I couldn't. I'm sorry. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. Mother, tell me who you were. I see. Edmund Dante, you're under arrest by order of the King's attorney. Up the jury. One last close look before you assemble to take a ballot the result of which can never be in doubt. And you, citizens of France, look at this man, who while purporting to be an honest sailor, was in reality a spy, who while imprisoned in the Chateau d'If, threatened the lives of guards, undermined the structure with tunnels, and when he discovered the old abbey held a secret to a treasure, he perhaps caused his death by crushing his poor body with great rocks. Think of his fiendishly contrived escape in the burial sack his unearthing of the treasure, 
is purchase of the title of Count, setting himself up as a nobleman. Know him for what he is. Traitor, spy, doubtless murderer, companion of thieves, patron of bandits, imposter, and criminal at large before his king. We'll send him back to prison. Why doesn't he speak? I don't know. His defense is all prepared. He won't use it. The king's attorney has concluded. The prosecution rests its case. It is my duty to advise the accused that if he declines to speak in his defense, the case must be judged wholly on the testimony presented by the prosecution. I have nothing to say. He's shielding Valentine. Valentine? Me? Come with me, my dear. I must tell you something. This court is in recess until the jury returns. That was 20 years ago. I thought you ought to know. Court convening. Court convening. Out there, quickly. I can't stay, but I must write him a note. Yes. Mother says you must defend yourself. It isn't fair to her if you don't. And it isn't fair to me. The court is now in session. Monsieur le President, if it is not too late, may I have the privilege of defending myself? It is the right of every citizen. Your Excellencies, Judges of France, gentlemen of the jury, my motives in not speaking in my defense were purely selfish. I was placing self above my duty to my fellow men, a duty which was made clear to me by the, the spiritual vision of a saintly man, the Abbe Faria. As we together, for eight torturous years, scratched our way through solid rock to reach the world again, in order that we might, in some small way, bring to the seat of trial some inhuman humans who make capital of justice. Monsieur le President, I find all this quite unnecessary and irrelevant. The accused is permitted to continue without further interruption. The interruption is well-timed. But in order to prove Edmund Dante's innocence, I must ask recourse to a witness. And is the witness obtainable? He is here in this court. Name him, and he shall be called. Unfortunately, court president precludes my calling him. Any precedent can be set aside. Who is he? The king's attorney. The king's attorney? That hardly is according to general court procedure. But as Monsieur de Villefort has already stepped down from his great office to personally prosecute this case, I'm sure he'll agree to set aside his cap and cloak of prosecutor long enough to serve as witness. Is this your signature and seal? Yes. It is the death certificate of Edmund Dante. <laughs> Monsieur de Villefort has been prosecuting a dead man. <laughs> I, I was a magistrate, not a coroner. Were you given to understand that I was dead? Of course, by the governor of the Chateau d'If. I apologize for the misunderstanding. Uh, one more question, Monsieur de Villefort. Why did you commit me to prison without trial? Because it was to your political advantage to do so. Absurd. I gained no advantage. Because you knew that if I was given trial, your father, a leader of the revolution, would be exposed. You shielded your father and sacrificed Edmund Dantes, cast him into oblivion, pronounced him dead. I acted for the good of my country at a time when such traitors as Dante's held the power to plunge us into anarchy. On what evidence was I convicted of being a dangerous traitor? On the most reliable testimony. Whose? A member of your own crew, the supercargo. His name? 
I've forgotten. I'll refresh your memory. His name was Danglars. Yes, Danglars. Later, Baron Danglars, the banker. Reputed to be honesty itself. I have his record here. He, to further his own ends, gave false testimony to send me to prison. He cheated his way to power, looted his own bank robbed thousands of honest workers of their savings, and yet he was but a tool in the hands of an even more despicable criminal who stood behind him, directed his evil practice, shared his profits, protected him from justice, was his lifelong friend and fellow conspirator, Raymond de Villefort. This is an incredible accusation. I am prepared to prove it, sir. This is not only an accusation, it is a warning. Danglars is finished, but the Villefort goes on as the power behind that banking house. And if the government does not immediately investigate his manipulations, the bank will collapse, carrying with it to destruction not only thousands upon thousands of investors, but the huge funds placed there by the national treasury itself. How can anything this criminal says be used as evidence? Here is the evidence of my innocence, attested and reattested affidavits from unimpeachable authorities. And here is his record, a complete history of Raymond de Villefort, an exposure that will rock this court and France to its foundations. In the interests of justice, we must at least examine these. This is out of order. I'm being treated as a prisoner, not as a witness. I demand a trial. He demands what he denied me. May I ask His Majesty's impartial judges to look at this man who so abused the privilege of public office, who so used treachery in place of justice, who so maliciously corrupted every phase of government with his touch. It is not my place to prosecute or judge this man. I am a prisoner. It is within the province of this court to pronounce me innocent or guilty. But I have followed the path of duty to my country and my fellow men by giving this prisoner to France. They can't be far from here. Mother. Mother. May we come up? You find your own tree. 